Hello students, welcome back to another lecture. Today we are going to read about ischemia reperfusion injury. Okay, so uh, before I start with this uh, lecture, I would just like to tell you one thing that please, please sit with a paper and a pen. Okay, trust me, you will take this little time and you will have your notes ready by the end of this lecture. Okay, so if you have an iPad, if you have a pen and pencil, please sit with that okay so today we are going to read about ischemia reperfusion injury it is examiner's favorite question also a very very important question for neat and very very important thing is that uh, that this question is also a long question in mbbs as well as post graduation okay both md as well as dnb so let us move forward okay oh why uh, why are we having sales tax over here Okay, is ischemia reperfusion injury associated with sales tax? Oh, so I would say yes, there is an association and why I am saying I can prove you in my uh, next slide. So if we see over here, whenever we are buying anything, okay, whenever we are buying a product, okay, we have to pay a price. Okay, so the cost of the product is around 100 rupees and if you look at the tax, the tax is around 9.75 so whenever you are buying a product you are giving a payment okay and this is the total payment that you have to pay if you want the product okay or if you have bought a product so whatever be the cost okay so whenever you are buying any product remember that is not the cost there is some taxations which have been added okay so why i am showing you this because there is an analogy that i am going to draw right now let us move ahead okay let us look at this slide now as i told you that whenever we are going to purchase a product okay uh, uh, we pay the total cost of the product plus we are paying some tax on that then we see the total cost of the product okay so the total cost that we are paying is far more than the actual cost okay this is the basic thing if you understand this, then I am telling you 100% that you already know about ischemia reperfusion injury. How? Let us see. So, see, whenever there is an ischemia, okay, whenever there is an ischemia, there is some sort of an irreversible cell damage. And uh, whenever uh, during ischemia, okay, we are giving treatment to the patient, okay, and the blood flow again is restored. We all know that ischemia occurs. Why? Ischemia occurs because of reduce blood supply to any organ or to any part of the body okay now whenever we restore the blood supply what should happen okay whatever the damage that has happened because of ischemia we should have just that amount of damage but instead we see that after maintaining the blood flow okay there is an extra damage there is an extra damage to the viable cells okay there is an extra amount of damage even after restoration of the blood flow that means even after i have paid for the product i have to pay a tax similarly even after even after the body has paid a price okay there has been a irreversible injury still after uh, 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 we pay the price after reperfusion after the blood flow is uh, 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 is restored okay there is some amount of extra injury okay that is a body is paying tax in the form of ischemia reperfusion injury okay and this along with the irreversible tissue damage uh, is equal to the total damage that is done to the body okay just understand this part we will understand more about this okay in the next slide okay let us go to the next slide okay so today's topic of discussion we are going to discuss about ischemia reperfusion injury so basically in short i would like to explain you what it is see initially it was found that a patient who is presenting with myocardial infarction okay so uh, he was being given some treatment okay and uh, 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 during the treatment procedure okay it was tried to restore to restore uh, uh, the blood flow for example there was coronary artery thrombosis okay so we were giving thrombolytics so that uh, the thrombus becomes dissolved okay there is thrombolysis and the blood flow can be restored back to the heart so what we saw what the clinicians what the scientists what they discovered that in spite of restoring the blood okay in spite of restoring the blood okay uh, 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 there was some kind of extra damage which could not be prevented okay so there was some extra damage okay always there was some extra damage so a lot of research was done on this part and it was found that 
during reperfusion reperfusion that means when i am restoring the blood back to that ischemic tissue there is some kind of injury okay and this injury is separate from the irreversible cell damage that has already occurred okay and this is called as ischemic reperfusion injury okay from now on i am going to use iri as a short form okay so let us read about something about it okay so what it was found that whenever there is a restoration of the blood flow to reversibly injured cells okay they can promote cell recovery okay very important term is that it has to be reversibly injured cell okay they can promote cell in, uh, recovery but can also paradoxically exacerbate the cell injury and cause cell death okay so the definition as per it says that when i am restoring the blood flow to a reversibly injured tissue okay the tissue has to be reversibly injured okay so it will promote a cell recovery but at the same time there will be some amount of injury cell injury will be there that is reperfusion injury okay let us look at the second part what are the components of the reperfused injury so one of them is firstly we are having a damaged ischemic cell okay the damaged ischemic cell is there along with that there is additional loss of viable cells due to ischemic reperfusion injury okay so there are two components okay as example when we buy a product there are two components one is the cost of the product and one is the tax that we are paying sales tax over here also there are the total damage is equivalent to the damaged ischemic cells plus additional loss of the viable cells due to the ischemic reperfusion injury now why do we want to read about ischemic reperfusion injury so you are have taken some time to view my lectures to view my video so what is your use why you will read about it so firstly firstly clinically if we see it is important because ischemic reperfusion injury is contributing to some sort of tissue damage okay during myocardial and cerebral infarction following therapies that is going to restore the blood flow as i already told you any kind of ischemic tissue okay when we restore the blood supply to that ischemic tissue it will undergo some kind of injury which is called as reperfusion injury so one reason is this that why we are reading this second is absolutely you have many exams you have competitive exams you have a neat pg you have neat super speciality again you have mbbs undergraduate exams you have post graduate exams so this is a very very important and common question which is asked okay so let us move ahead okay so what is the mechanism of reperfusion injury so let us see see this is a this this is basically a blood vessel and there is an obstruction i gave some treatment okay whatever be the treatment i uh, re establish the blood flow so once the blood flow has been re established there is ischemic reperfusion injury and there are four basic mechanisms of ischemic reperfusion injury one is oxidative stress number two is increased intracellular calcium overload number three is inflammation and number four is activation of the complement system okay so let us move ahead and see so one we are going to discuss about the oxidative stress okay okay if you have seen my other lectures you know probably what an oxidative stress is so let let us first see so over here what i have drawn i have drawn a tissue okay a tissue showing different components a tissue which is affected by ischemia so it is an ischemic tissue so ischemic tissue will have some of the area is irreversibly damaged tissue. some area has undergone damage and has shown irreversible injury some of the tissue still is in the stage of reversible cell injury that is they are in the stage of ischemia okay so at this point of time if i am restoring the blood flow then the, uh, some amount of this tissue can be salvaged okay but not the complete amount okay so how there is oxidative stress so let us see so what will happen whenever whenever blood is blood flow has been restored to this ischemic tissue and these damaged tissues there is what there is something there is an incomplete reduction of oxygen okay in the neutrophils plus it is also there in the damaged endothelial cells and the parenchymal cells so in all these three places the neutrophils the endothelial cells and the parenchymal cells okay once they suffer from ischemia okay they undergo incomplete reduction of oxygen okay and there is second thing also there is an impaired cellular antioxidant mechanism so cell as such when it is prone to ischemia 
they tend to undergo incomplete reduction of oxygen okay and this incomplete reduction of oxygen will lead to increased production of free radicals uh, that means it includes both the reactive oxygen species as well as reactive nitrogen species we have already read in our previous lecture there is a de dedicated lecture on free radicals i would suggest everyone to go and watch that lecture okay if you see you can understand that these free radicals that is ros and rns okay these are very very bad okay they can cause lipid peroxidation they can cause protein damage they can cause lipid breakdown as well okay let us move ahead now the second leg is the intracellular calcium overload okay one of my lectures was dedicated on calcium homeostasis you can go and watch that particular lecture so let us see about intracellular calcium overload so also during acute ischemia we have something called as intracellular calcium overload so how how this overload occurs there are two mechanisms during ischemia what happens the cell membrane starts to lose okay its semi permeable nature so there is a cell membrane damage okay and number 2 there is uh, uh, also membrane damage of the endoplasmic reticulum as well as the mitochondria okay so and and how how is this uh, uh, this damage to the membrane occurring as we already know the reactive oxygen species because of the oxidative stress the ros has been released and this will go and cause damage to the membranes of the cell that is the plasma membrane as well as the membranes of the organelles for example the endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria okay we already know that this endoplasmic reticulum as well as the mitochondria they are the storehouse of calcium ion okay intracellular storehouse of calcium so when the membrane will be damaged excess amount of calcium will be released into the cytoplasm also from outside there will be influx of calcium because of cell membrane or plasma membrane damage so ultimate result is what ultimate result is there is an increased calcium in the cytoplasm and we have already seen whenever the calcium level will increase it is going to stimulate the mptp mptp stands for mitochondrial permeability transition pore in the mitochondria so there will be loss of membrane potential there will be loss of oxidative phosphorylation and there will be reduced production of atp second important thing is it is going to stimulate a number of of uh, 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 enzymes which has multiple downstream effects i have already discussed that please go and see my lectures on calcium homeostasis okay let us see the third leg the third leg is about inflammation so what happens how inflammation is contributing to ischemic reperfusion injury so if you see whenever there is inflammation okay is associated okay with an ischemic tissue there are three things happening danger signals are being released from the dead cells okay cytokines are being released from the inflammatory cells which are present at the site of ischemia and number 3 there is an increase expression of adhesion molecules now these adhesion molecules are expressed by the hypoxic parenchymal as well as the endothelial cells okay and these cells when they express such adhesion molecules they capture they capture the neutrophil they capture the inflammatory cells so all these three things will cause chemotaxis okay they are going to attract the inflammatory cells to the site of ischemia okay and again as we all know that the inflammatory cells are also an important source of reactive oxygen species as uh, they produce okay reactive oxygen species and they will further cause cause more cell damage as we all know that inflammation is a two way sword okay two sided sword okay two bladed sword okay double edged sword as we say inflammation is a double edged sword sometimes it will protect the body sometimes it will harm the body so in this case it is harming the body let us look at the last leg that is complement activation so under complement activation what i really wanted to show you is a very very basic thing how complement will get activated so suppose we are seeing over here there is an there, there is basically a tissue okay which is suffering from ischemia not the entire tissue but a part of the tissue is suffering from ischemia okay so this ischemic part to this ischemic part there is an antibody igm antibody will go and bind to this part now if you see uh, once this igm will go and bind okay to that ischemic part now after that when the blood flow is now restored 
Now this fresh blood that is coming is rich in complement proteins and this complement proteins will go and bind to the IgM antibody which is already bound to the uh, uh, to the ischemic part of the tissue. So this complement has gone and attached. Now this complement system once it will get activated it will cause cell injury. Now the details of the complement system we will do later in, in, in my further lectures I am going to explain but remember that complement system is also one system in our body. It is a set of proteins okay which is basically designed okay to combat microbial infections okay but in some instances it can also attack our body. Okay, let us look at the next slide. Okay, this is one important slide that, uh, that I wanted to show so as to make this concept very clear. The concept of ischemia reperfusion injury. See, in this slide, see this slide, this, this number one portion, look at this. So over here, the myocardial ischemia, okay, in absence of reperfusion. For example, a patient has suffered from myocardial infarction and I have given no treatment to the patient. So what happened that the infarct size now is 70%. Infarct size now is equivalent to 70%. Okay. Now let us look at the second situation. Okay. So now the ischemia has happened. The ischemia has occurred. But in this situation, I have carried out reperfusion. The patient has received some form of treatment. So in this situation, if you see the infarct size is now reduced to 40%. Okay. Initially, if I did not give any treatment, the infarct size was 70%. But in this situation, the infarct size is around 40%. Okay. So where does this remaining 30% go? This remaining 30% infarct that has occurred this remaining 30% of the myocardium which has undergone injury if you can see in this in this image the light portioned area okay the area which is lighter has undergone infarct okay this is because of reperfusion injury this is because of reperfusion injury okay so now you understood so whenever okay whenever there is so there are two components to an injury one that has already taken place okay some amount of injury which has this 30 percent is actually representing the amount of injury which has already taken place permanent damage plus the amount of injury that has occurred because of reperfusion so it is the total product of both of them okay reperfusion injury is adding up to whatever injury that has already been there okay so uh, what i wanted to say over here is that okay so now let let us see the third scenario let us look at the third scenario now in this situation if you see in this situation uh, we have given certain things called as a cardio protection so there is now a theory okay there is a new theory that uh, that we can reduce reperfusion theory okay so reperfusion theory can be reduced by something called as conditioning there is a preconditioning there is a post conditioning usually in this conditioning process uh, 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 these cycles of ischemia okay there uh, we give brief cycles of ischemia followed by brief cycles of uh, reperfusion okay so these are carried out in brief intervals okay details of this is beyond the scope of this video lecture okay it comes as a part of medicine okay so this is all about the ischemic reperfusion injury hope you have enjoyed this lecture any kind of doubt please comment okay thank you very much for watching this lecture stay subscribed thanks